10, 50 hours. Arabian Gulf. The morning haze hung low over the warm waters as a shadow appeared on the horizon, its rotor blades slicing the air with a slow, tired rhythm. It was an Iranian Navy SH-3 Sea King, a relic from the 1960s, the kind of machine that belonged in a museum, not a confrontation. Its mission, force the American destroyer USS Fitzgerald to change course and prove that Tehran still controlled these waters. What happened next, however, would show that Iran Iran's greatest weapon wasn't its technology, it was its ego. 10.52 hours. Inside the USS Fitzgerald's Combat Information Center, the atmosphere was calm, almost casual. Operators stared at radar screens designed to track ballistic missiles in orbit, now focusing on a helicopter so outdated that even its radar emissions sounded analog. The ship's Aegis Combat System, a digital fortress capable of tracking over 100 simultaneous targets, flagged the new contact automatically. Designation appeared on screen, track 0341, Iranian rotary aircraft, threat level, negligible. The officer on watch didn't even look up. This was no attack. It was an opportunity. According to sources obtained by Global Warfare Report, American analysts immediately began cataloging every frequency the helicopter emitted. Each pulse, each transmission, became another line of data in an expanding library of Iranian vulnerabilities. 1054 hours. The Iranian pilot, flying a helicopter older than himself, pushed forward on the cyclic, lowering altitude toward the sea. Through the cracked canopy, the pilot could see the gray shape of the USS Fitzgerald, a 9,000-ton destroyer cruising steadily through international waters. To him, it looked like defiance. To the Americans, it looked like an engineering test subject. The Fitzgerald's SLQ-32 Electronic Warfare Suite came alive. Not to jam, but to listen. It captured the helicopter's radar frequency, 9.6 gigahertz, Doppler sweep pattern primitive, unchanged since the Vietnam War. It recorded the radio chatter too, unencrypted, operating on civilian aviation frequencies, the kind that could be picked up with a $30 scanner from any hobby shop. Inside the combat center, sailors grinned. This wasn't a threat, it was an open book. 1056 hours. The radar operator leaned over to the tactical action officer. Sir, contact is closing. Range 10 nautical miles, speed 130 knots. Bearing steady, the officer nodded, bored. Keep tracking, log all emissions. There was no alarm, no alert, just quiet professionalism. If this were wartime, the Fitzgerald would have destroyed the helicopter in under 30 seconds. The SPY-1 radar would lock, the SM-2 missile would launch, and the sky would rain aluminum and fire. But this wasn't war, this was intelligence harvesting, and Iran had just volunteered a perfect target. 10, 58 hours. The Iranian SH-3 descended lower, now just 500 feet above the waterline. Salt spray whipped across its aging airframe, and from the destroyer's deck, crew members could see the black smoke pouring from its engines. A pair of 58 T turbines that hadn't seen a factory replacement part since before the internet existed. The sound wasn't threatening, it was pitiful. According to sources, the Fitzgerald's intelligence division began running real-time spectral analysis. The goal, build a unique electronic fingerprint of the helicopter, one that could be used to instantly identify and jam any similar platform in the future. Every hertz of its radar, every modulation of its radio, was now being cataloged and transmitted through the Link-16 network to other U.S. ships and aircraft in the area. Within seconds, the entire carrier strike group saw the same picture. One outdated helicopter stumbling toward a destroyer that could erase it with a keystroke. 11 o'clock hours. Inside the Iranian helicopter, the situation was less confident. Warning lights blinked across the instrument panel, most disconnected because replacement parts hadn't existed since 1979 mind fuel gauges were unreliable. The cyclic stick vibrated from worn rotor bearings. Still, the pilot continued, hoping to provoke a reaction. If the Americans turned, even slightly, Tehran could call it a victory. On board the Fitzgerald, sailors weren't even looking up. The CRAM and Phalanx CIWS systems had already locked the track, calculating a 98% kill probability in under two seconds. But the barrels never raised. Against supersonic missiles, those systems were lethal. Against a slow helicopter, 
pointless. 1102 hours. American warship. A voice crackled over the open frequency. You are approaching Iranian territorial waters. Change course immediately. The accent was thick. The transmission. Clear voice. No encryption. Inside the combat information center, laughter rippled through the watch crew. The Fitzgerald was operating 75 nautical miles from Iranian shores, deep within international waters. To make things worse, the Americans decided to respond, but not with anger. A female communications officer replied calmly. Iranian aircraft. This is the United States Navy vessel operating in international waters in accordance with international law. We will maintain course and speed. The Iranian pilot hesitated. The response was polite, professional, and utterly dismissive. 11.04 hours. While the Iranians were trying to sound intimidating, the Americans were learning. The SLQ-32 system had already mapped the helicopter's APN-130 Doppler radar signature, its pulse repetition rate, and even the engine harmonics of the aging T-58 turbines. Every second of flight was another page of intelligence. For Tehran, this was meant to be a show of dominance. For Washington, it was a live electronic field test. In the operations log, one entry captured the moment perfectly. Iranian rotary aircraft continues non-hostile maneuvering. All signals logged, threat minimal, intelligence value high. The Americans didn't see a threat. They saw an opportunity, one that would expose every weakness in Iran's aerial playbook. 11.06 hours. The Iranian pilot adjusted course, trying to cross the destroyer's bayo for a dramatic camera shot, but his left engine coughed, sputtered, and dropped torque. The helicopter yawed awkwardly. Below, sailors on deck waved casually. The kind of wave you give tourists, not enemies. To the U.S. Navy, this wasn't combat. It was routine observation. But to Tehran, this would soon become state television gold. A propaganda Propaganda victory built from misunderstanding, malfunction, and pride. And yet, what was coming next would make even that illusion impossible. Because while the Iranians were recording video for broadcast, the Americans were recording something far more valuable. Their entire electronic signature, 1108 hours, Arabian Gulf. The Iranian pilot steadied his controls, sweat running down his neck as the helicopter fought against its own weight. The port engine oil pressure gauge flickered in the red, but retreat wasn't an option. His orders were clear. Make the Americans flinch, no matter the cost. Below, the USS Fitzgerald maintained its course, slicing the waves at 30 knots. The ship's wake foamed white against the deep blue sea, indifferent to the relic above. Inside the combat information center, sailors quietly logged each emission from the helicopter, radar sweeps, radio bursts, and even its altitude telemetry. According to sources obtained by Global Warfare Report, every signal was transmitted live through Link 16 to the carrier strike group 200 miles away. Within seconds, destroyers, cruisers, and aircraft all had the same picture. In U.S. Navy terminology, this was called full-spectrum awareness. For the Iranians, it was called being surrounded, 1110 hours. Inside the Fitzgerald's intelligence bay, the electronic warfare officer leaned over a console. Signal profile consistent with pre-revolution U.S. export model. He said, Translation, they were flying an airframe that America had sold them in 1977. The system recorded everything. Radar frequency 9.72 gigahertz. Pulse width 15 microseconds. Sweep rate 220 milliseconds. Those numbers might sound meaningless, but to the U.S. Navy, they were priceless. They could now replicate, jam, or deceive any Iranian helicopter of that class at will. Every moment the helicopter stayed airborne, it was feeding America its own defeat data. 11, 12 hours. American warship, you are violating Iranian territorial waters. The pilot's voice crackled again, this time with desperation. He repeated it twice. The Fitzgerald didn't respond. On the bridge, the officer of the deck raised an eyebrow and glanced at the tactical plot. The destroyer was 70 nautical miles from Iran's baseline, well within international waters. He keyed the intercom calmly, maintain course and speed. Do not acknowledge further transmissions. The 
The communication log would later describe the exchange as non-threatening contact. Psychological posturing observed. 11.15 hours, the Iranian helicopter banked left and descended for a low-pass flyover. Its blades beat the air unevenly. As the signals technician updated the threat log, Sir, they're transmitting on civilian VHF channels, 121.5 and 243 megahertz. No encryption, copy. Record everything. Every word, every tone, every glitch in the Iranian radios was stored in the ship's electronic order of battle database. Next time an Iranian aircraft appeared on radar, the system would instantly identify it by that signature. 11, 26 hours. For the Fitzgerald's crew, this wasn't a confrontation. It was target practice without firing. For the Iranians, it was quickly becoming a nightmare. The SH-3's starboard engine sputtered again. Oil pressure dropped into the yellow. The crew chief pointed at the gauge, shouting above the whine, We need to head home now. The pilot hesitated, knowing that retreat would look weak, but the choice was clear, return to base or ditch in the Gulf. He radioed his control tower, mission complete. The American warship has changed course. That wasn't true. The Fitzgerald had simply executed a pre-planned waypoint adjustment, but for Iranian state television, it was exactly the story they needed. 11.28 hours. Inside the Fitzgerald, the intelligence team recorded every word. Laughter filled the CIC. One sailor remarked, they'll call this a victory by lunchtime. He was right. Within hours, Iranian media would broadcast heavily edited footage of the encounter, claiming their brave pilots forced an American destroyer to flee. The truth was that the helicopter had barely made it home. 11.30 hours. As the SH-3 limped northward, black smoke trailing from one engine, the Fitzgerald continued its patrol. Sensors live, systems steady, crew unfazed. The destroyer had gathered an hour's worth of electronic intelligence, enough to refine U.S. jamming protocols, update radar libraries, and map yet another outdated Iranian system. For the U.S. Navy, it was a flawless operation. For Iran, it was an accidental training exercise for their enemy. According to sources obtained by Global Warfare Report, the incident lasted barely 40 minutes, but its implications were lasting. One outdated helicopter had revealed decades of secrets, frequencies, call signs, communication habits, and even mechanical weaknesses. The lesson was simple. In the modern battle space, the side that speaks loudest is usually the one being recorded. The Fitzgerald never fired a shot. It didn't need to. Its sensors did all the work. And by the time Iranian news declared victory, the U.S. Navy had already logged the encounter under a single word, complete.